Back to Good Day Columbia Time. Right now is 611. This Saturday, Americans will remember the hurricane that claimed the lives of thousands of people. We're talking about Hurricane Katrina. Many were displaced. Some were still considered missing as of right now. Many left New Orleans searching for a new life, and there was someone here in the Midlands who helped them to do that. Joining me now is Sam Tenenbaum. Sam, thank you for being here this morning. Good morning. Take us back 10 years or so now when the devastation took place in New Orleans. How were you so instrumental in helping so many people move here or come to the Midlands? Well, I got a call from Mayor Coble. I said he was putting together a group of people because he and Congressman Clyburn discussed about offering to bring in up to 5,000 people to the Midlands. That's a lot of people. And yeah. a lot of people, and that was Labor Day weekend. I happened to be out of town. I came back okay. into town. We met Friday and then laid out some little plans. And then Saturday night, the mayor called me and said, you're in charge. I said, wow. I said, all right, Mr. Mayor. No pressure, huh? No pressure. <laughs> I said, uh, I'll meet you Sunday morning at your office. Of course, Saturday night I laid out all kind of ideas, and then I said, all right, here's what we got to do. Monday morning, Labor Day, I got to meet with SLED, Lexington County Sheriff, Richland County Sheriff. I got to have the United Way there. I got to have so-and-so and so-and-so. And so Monday morning, yeah. I met with them, then FEMA came in and South Carolina Emergency Management, Emergency Management and then basically told them, what this, is, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> See, they wanted to put them in, in shelters. Right. And I said, this community, we're better than that. We're going to put people in hotels and motels. And then I already had a list because of that Saturday, three of us went around Columbia to all the motels. Remember, it was football season. Yeah. And so we had to get a commitment from them for rooms. Now, did you all go down to New Orleans? No. Or many no. of them were being bused over the, here? Or how did that work? They were all flown in. And within 24 hours, starting that Tuesday, in 24 hours, over 2,000 people came to oh, Columbia. Two, so 2,000 people? In 24 hours. In 20, And then wow. Dr. Sorensen at the University of South Carolina yeah. had already given us the Naval Reserve Center on Pickens Street. And he'd already had it repainted, cleaned up, put in telephones, computers for us. What was that like for some of those individuals? Of course, obviously, some people, all they've known was New Orleans. Correct. So literally in 24 hours, you wake up and come to a brand new community. They, some folks had no idea where they were. I mean, they were at the New Orleans airport and they just put them on planes. They split families up. One of the things oh, we had to do wow. is, is reconnect families later on. And then of course, a lot of folks who got here wanted to go back for funerals because a lot of the family died. But this community, you gotta understand, the first thing is the media told the story. You know, when you I'm in a nonprofit now. One of the things you always have to do is go out and tell the story why you're asking the for question, help. Yeah, right. We didn't have to do that. It it's, was evident. It was so evident because the American media newspapers, TV, et cetera, had told the story. And you saw it, the helicopters pulling people off roofs. You saw yeah, people swimming for their lives. We, we just showed some of those images right there, the flood, the devastation, right. and even signs with help me, save me. Right, so we didn't have to tell the story. This community fulfilled its basic biblical obligation of the Judeo-Christian concept, love thy neighbor. You know, we call these folks guests. They weren't refugees. And this community mm. had an outpouring where the president of the American Red Cross said that we, the Midlands, set the standard for the nation. Wow. Putting people in hotels and motels. We had meals delivered to them. We had institutions, religious institutions, mm -hmm. companies who adopted the motels, who were there, and they had people from their companies helping them every day. Uh, we put them on the bus routes, because obviously these people had no transportation. And the trolleys, we had the trolleys running yeah and they would bring them to the center. It took four hours to go through the Red Cross and FEMA just to get registered and everything else. But what we did that Labor Day, we did a little role playing, saying, all right, I'm coming from New Orleans. Let's say I got some money in a local bank. There's no power, I can't use my debit card. Or, you know, so yeah. what happens if I were on parole? So we said, we need bankers, we need lawyers. We went down, everything that, That's if I were coming in, what would I need? And yeah. so that, Tuesday, baby diapers for, for babies. Whatever. So yeah. Tuesday morning, after late, we got on the phone, we called all the institutions and agencies that we thought we would need, and we said, you got to be here at 12 o'clock. 
Wow. They were there. And they were there. Same. Once again, we're, we are remembering Hurricane Katrina here on Good Day Columbia. And a few moments ago, we had a chance to speak with Sam Tenenbaum. You talked, who's instrumental by helping, by helping so many people who are displaced because of the hurricane. They came here. They were here in the Midlands. You all got together. Mayor Kobo, Bob Kobo at the time, so many other community figures. Before we left last, you were talking about how the community began to play a factor. Even kids. How did, what did they do to help these displaced? The community really lived by the, the commandment to love thy neighbor. Well, you saw the real application of people's faith, okay? Mm -hmm. Kids brought piggy banks. Uh, $420,000 was raised and we didn't ask for a penny. 420000 That's right. And we used that money to, mm -hmm. obviously, we used it well to pay for a lot of bills and to reunite families who had been right. split up at the airports, people who needed to go back for funerals and wanted to come back here. And folks stayed here, you know, for six to eight months who were planning to go back and others permanently here for a while. And then I think the last person that I know of left about uh, two months ago. How surprised were you with the reaction from the community? Because basically these are taking in complete, some would say strangers, into their midst. Well, I've been involved in the community. I was in the steel business and being involved in everything. This is a good community. And again, I'll go back giving credit to the media, which you told the story. You told it big and small in terms of individuals. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't have to go out and, and spend money and time explaining why we needed your help. We had so many volunteers, I had to turn people away. And then two years later, people would still come up to me and say, you didn't call me back. And I say, I'm sorry, I apologize. What uh, stands but out? We had, for instance, we mm -hmm. had businesses, uh, a family-owned restaurant here delivered meals every day to all the motels for us. So they had a very good meal. They didn't make any money off of it. We covered the cost. Uh, the first night we had to take people to get prescriptions filled at a major drugstore. You don't think about that. People who need medicine. Right. And uh, so uh, I gave the gentleman the two prescriptions, different names on it, and I said, well, I'm going to be in trouble. And he looked at me and <laughs> yeah, he said, thick year. He uh, said, I know you. I said, and I went, how? He said, oh, I saw you on TV. I said, that's right. We're here helping the folks from Katrina. He filled the prescription, and then, of course, I was going to give him my credit card just to pay for it because we didn't right. have any money. And he said, oh, no, it's on us. And look how the community okay? came together to help all those individuals. So it was, I'm telling you, it was so uplifting yeah. uh, of what this community was doing. And that's when the President of the American Red Cross said, we set the standard not only in the planning, but the yeah. response of this community. And here we are 10 years later. Uh, I know with you helping, the community helping, what is one thing that stands out to you the most about that entire situation? The fact that it was pure love. Wow. The, these were um, mm -hmm. our guests. So we looked at, and we used the word guest. They weren't refugees, they, weren't, they were our guests. Mm -hmm. So you have a guest staying in your house, you have a guest at a hotel, what do you do? You make sure they, they're well taken care of. That's right, they're taken care of. Yeah. Every need that we could think of, from mm -hmm. spiritual to physical to health to food to connecting with families back home, a major mm -hmm. corporation set up long distance lines for us. I mean, everybody came in. I'm telling mm -hmm. you um, that when we had a little problem, mm -hmm. I had uh, Senator Graham come in to talk to some of the federal agencies. Yeah. And uh, he talked, and he, found someone who gave us $25,000 to help reunite people. It was just, I'm telling you, it was an incredible moment. Everybody worked. The first day, I was up for 48 hours, making sure everything was just mm -hmm. going. Um, and they needed that because, you know, <clears throat> once again, you have these guests coming in, seeing the devastation, Hurricane Katrina, some people, families died because of that, and so they needed that. And so to know that the Midlands came together and to know that you were instrumental in helping that, you know, kudos to you all for doing that. We also had a motel that mm -hmm. would take pets. On one of the planes, ah. on one of the planes, uh -huh. a Mastiff, you know, this huge dog, uh, right. he had the first class seat, okay? <laughs> they said they couldn't get him out. But anyway, uh -huh. at the motel, I asked her, you yeah. have some dog food? She said, yeah, this is like 4 o'clock in the morning. She said, but he loves anchovies. So, and Okay, anchovies, so, all right. <laughs> so I went to a place that's open all night and bought some cans of anchovies and gave it to her to say, and she knew that we really meant what we said we were going to do, okay? And you took care of every... And we took care. We, oh, people mm -hmm. brought... One person brought his pet snake. Okay. Okay. Right. Wow. Okay. It's from New Orleans. Right. <laughs> right. You have all the different. But we yeah. took care of everybody. You know, only we had to explain to people in South Carolina you can't walk with an open container. In New Orleans, you can walk down Bourbon Street. Okay. Yeah. So we had to explain. Les as they say. We had to explain yeah. our culture is a little different. So if you can right. have a beer, you got to drink it inside. 
you know. Okay, so explain And so we had, we had no problems. I mean, you know, wow. just mind a little. You got to understand, overall, these people were in such stress. And, uh, they just needed help. They wow. just needed help. And this Sam community came through. Came through. Sam, thank you so much for being here this morning. I really do well, appreciate it. Thank you all for telling thank the you. story again. Absolutely. And it's an important milestone about yeah. what we can do. It's a good country. When we come don't, together. Don't listen to all this negative stuff from our politicians. It's a good country. And you mobilize our, mm -hmm. our people, and we can solve every problem. Sam for president. <laughs> all right, <laughs> folks, stay with us. There's more Good Day Columbia coming up after this.